Hello, welcome. My name is Angela. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Rainbow Ange. I'm coming to you from South Wales in the UK. It is Monday the 3rd of July and it is coming up to 4.30 in the afternoon. Um, here on my channel you will be able to find videos of uh, me chatting about my adventures in knitting and spinning and crochet and um, also um, talking to you about my adventures as a yarn shop owner. And today's video will be focusing on um, my first three months as a yarn shop owner. Three months, it just seems completely crazy. Um, time is flying by so quickly. Um, so much has happened and yet um, my first day seems like yesterday. Um, but I thought it'd be quite fun to have a little recap. I did a recap of my first week and a recap of my first month. So, so I think uh, three months is a good milestone to be talking to you um, on and to kind of reflect on what has happened uh, since I took over the shop on the 1st of April. My shop is called Yarn and Yarns and it is based in Penarth in South Wales, just outside of Cardiff. Um, so I have made a few notes today, which uh, if you've uh, joined me before, you know is a bit of an unusual occurrence, but I was trying to refresh myself on everything that's happened and I realized that I just wouldn't be able to remember everything that I wanted to really um, sort of take note of unless I wrote a few notes down. So yeah, I thought I'd chat today about um, some of the highs and lows um, of the last three months and also a quick section at the end about a few of the things that we've got um, upcoming. So things that are in the planning stages um, but will hopefully be imminent. Um, and if you see me glancing down, um, I'm working on a sock. <laughs> as I'm chatting to you. Um, there probably won't be that much to, to show you today in the video. It will mostly be me waffling on. So before we start, um, perhaps I will just give you a quick flash. I started this sock yesterday. It's going to be a present for uh, my friend Rian. Um, I've spoken about Rian um, in one of my videos before. Um, I used to work with her um, at a previous uh, employed job um, that I had. I was working um, on a temporary contract at uh, the local voluntary bureau and uh, Rian was one of the colleagues that I met there and since I took over the shop she has been fantastic help uh, coming in on her days off. She works part-time at the moment um, helping me reorganise the shop and just um, tidy up and clean and yeah she's been absolutely fantastic. Um, so she mentioned that she'd quite fancied uh, a pair of knit socks. She's only just got back into knitting and crocheting herself um, and I love to knit socks um, as you will know if you have watched my videos before. So I offered to um, knit her a pair if she wanted to just pick out some yarn and she picked out this lovely skein of uh, blue and mauve sock yarn. Um, it is an Aracania Ranco uh, skein. It's actually a discontinued yarn um, but we have a few skeins hanging about in the shop. They used, I'm swaying around because they used to be, oh you can just about see them over my shoulder there. They were up above me um, but I recently moved them around um, because I needed some room to fit in some uh, new exciting local yarn um, which I also haven't spoken to you about yet. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. That was a bit of a long ramble, just to explain why you might see me glancing down every now and then. <laughs> but uh, I should probably get on with um, what I'm here to do today, um, particularly as time is going on. Um, and it would be nice if I got home before nine o'clock. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Um, what should I talk to you about first? I will probably, I think I'll talk to you about um, some of the things that haven't really gone so well first. Um, there aren't that many, fingers crossed, touch wood and all that. 
Um, we've been very, very lucky. We've had a few minor hiccups along the way, um, but nothing disastrous has happened. Um, and I think, you know, given we are so new to um, this business, uh, we can really count our blessings for that. Um, so yeah, I guess the things that stick out for me as uh, being things that have not gone as well as I would like. Uh, the first thing was my complete failure to um, organise anything for Yarn Shop Day. Um, yarn Shop Day happened, um, I think, at the... Must have been May sometime. I can't even remember a date now. Is it May or June? I don't know, it doesn't really matter. It was several weeks after I took over the shop um, and I really hoped to be able to um, put on some sort of event in the in the shop, but uh, time just got away with me and if I'd have been able to do anything, it just really wouldn't have been uh, anything that I would have been proud of presenting or doing, something I could have perhaps cobbled something together last minute but that's not really what I wanted to do so um, in the end I decided really just to let the day slide past um, I bought some cake and things for um, my group that meets regularly on a Saturday as uh, yarn shop day was a Saturday but uh, aside from that the day sort of passed by unnoticed really which um, I kind of regret but um, also as I say I don't think I would have been entirely happy if I'd have tried to put on some sort of event um, and I hadn't put the effort into um, making it a good quality um, event so yeah um, <clears throat> other things that um, haven't happened in the way that I had hoped um, given that we're now three months into um, business here I had really hoped that we would have a website up and running by now um, but it just really hasn't happened um, not for lack of wanting to do it just more um time really um i am running the business on my own with a little bit of help from my partner james uh, but james works full time so he doesn't have huge amounts of time to uh, help me sort of put things together um so yeah it, it's just not enough hours in the day really um we've also been waiting for um, some of our friends to help us with a new logo for the shop and they've done some fabulous designs but I just really haven't had the time to get back to them and uh, sort of confirm which uh, logo design we want to go forward with. So that's um, sort of held things up a little bit with the website because we really wanted to wait until we had uh, the new logo before we started uh, putting things together there. Um, but yeah, I'm sure that will come. I think um, we shall make that a priority target for the next three months. Uh, I think that seems to be a good way forward. Um, I think there's probably, I mean, there was a couple of minor irritations at uh, the very beginning of us taking over the business. It took a little while for our card payment machine to arrive, um, which was uh, quite frustrating but uh, luckily I was able to borrow a payment machine from the previous owner. Um, so it all worked out okay in the end. I didn't have to send people away asking them to come back with their cash payments or anything. So as I say, a minor annoyance in the scheme of things. Um, I've also had my first zero takings day. The till did not ring once. <laughs> which was uh, really quite demoralising. But, um, you know, we were kind of expecting that that would happen at some point. Um, and now it has. And overall, um, the takings for that week weren't really affected too much. Um, by the time we got to the end of the week, we'd caught up a bit. So um, I think it's probably quite a good thing that it's happened. Um, I'm sure there will be other days where there are no customers through the door. Um, but now I know it's not the end of the world if uh, we do have days like that. Obviously, we hope those days are few and far between. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if it if it happens, it happens. You you just you just never know um, from day to day whether you're going to have constant flow of people or if you'll only see one or two. 
people throughout the day so it's just something you can't plan for um, you never know when someone is going to have a burning desire to come in and buy you on for their next project um, I guess probably one last thing to um, talk to you about on the uh, negative side or the kind of uh, not so good things is that um, when I took over the shop I was able to buy the current stock as was um, and one of my more popular yarns is um, a brand called Peyton's um, we stock several of their lines I have got um, I'm just looking around the shop to remind myself I've got uh, Peyton's cotton which is a mercurized cotton so it's a, a nice cotton with a sheen and it's quite good value for money it comes in 100 gram balls I've also got um, Peyton's extra fine merino um, both double knit and four ply um, and that yarn is quite popular and um, particularly amongst my knitters who knit for babies and children as it is um, washable and tumble dryable and um, I'm really having problems trying to get the um, company that now supplies patents to engage with me um, back a little while ago I believe that patents and Rowan yarn were supplied by the same company um, and then there was a bit of a reorganisation and Rowan was bought by a German company and I'm not sure um, who the company that supplies patents is uh, owned by but um, I got in touch with them the same as I got in touch with all of the other companies that um, we have uh, yarn from and they are the only ones three months down the line they are the only ones who have not engaged with me um, one of their reps was meant to be coming out to see me um, I was told that they were super busy and they wouldn't be able to come and see me until June um, the date that the appointment was due has come and gone and no sign of that rep and also no response to any of the communications that I've sent since then so sadly even though that one is a popular yarn amongst my customers I'm probably gonna have to look for some alternatives um, I can't really have unreliable um, suppliers and um, no matter how nice or popular the yarns are so yeah that's that's been very frustrating um, but again that sort of thing is outside my control I can only do what I can do um, I can do my best to, to try and engage with these these companies um, I am a small shop so maybe I'm just seen as not worth their while or maybe there's just been a mix-up and we keep falling through the cracks but uh, whatever the case I think sadly we'll probably have to um, discontinue those lines and, and look for, for alternatives but uh, we'll see we'll give them um, another sort of few weeks and, and see what happens really um, so yeah that's uh, really it I think as a, a roundup of uh, some of the, the negative things so uh, yeah nothing really bad in in the grand scheme of things um, we've definitely been very lucky in that regard in contrast um, in terms of the things that we have achieved and the successes in our first three months I've got quite a long list which um, yeah I'm feeling quite proud of that um, I I really couldn't imagine um, back when uh, we first took over the business how much we'd manage be it out. Oh, put my teeth in. I really couldn't have envisaged when we first took over um, how much stuff we'd be able to uh, achieve in the first few weeks of uh, being in business. So yeah, I'm, I'm really quite pleased. Um, so I guess the major um, thing that we've done is uh, I have done a stock take of all of the yarn that was in the shop. Um, now, if you're joining me for the first time or haven't watched some of my earlier videos, you're probably wondering why I needed to do a stock take. Um, well, I bought the business, as I said, um, lock, stock and barrel in terms of stock. Um, and I had an inventory given to me, um, but it was literally a handwritten piece of paper with uh, numbers of... Uh, balls and skeins of each type of yarn so for instance um, it would say Debbie Bliss Baby Cash Merino I don't know 500 balls but there'd be no breakdown of how many 
of each colour, what dye lots we had, any of that sort of thing. So um, when it comes to people walking into the shop, picking out a yarn that they wanted to do something with and then asking, have you got five balls of this or eight balls of this? It would be a case of having to um, rummage around, pull everything out of the cubbies, go and have a look at the excess stock in the back or um, some of the stock is um, kept up above the uh, the display cubbies. Um, yeah, it would be a bit chaotic trying to um, locate the yarn and then find out whether we had enough of a particular colourway um, for a project that had been chosen. So um, I made it my priority to go through um, all of the, the yarns in the shop and do a proper inventory. Um, I haven't been able to afford to get any fancy gadgets or anything, so it's literally just been me um, counting and setting up a spreadsheet. So um, as you can imagine, that was a, a lot of work. Um, but that's now all done. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's really made a big difference um, to the ease with which I can help people as they come in the shop. It's just so easy to be able to look up something and, and tell people straight away whether or not uh, we've got the stock that uh, that they're after um, and if we haven't got it um, I'm able to um, easily suggest uh, an alternative sorry just uh, dropped a stitch so I need to fix that <laughs> um, so yeah definitely worthwhile definitely worthwhile um, I've also started doing the same thing for all of the patterns and all of the needles um, I did a very basic needle needle um, inventory before I took over the shop um, but because I did it before I took over the shop um, obviously things were sold and not written down um, so it's not very up to date so I've started doing um, another one of those so that I can get it up to date um, and also I've started a reorganization of the patterns um, I've done all of the single patterns um, but I still have quite a lot of pattern books and things around the shop um, so that's um, going to be one of the next jobs to tackle and then once that's done I should have a full inventory of everything that we have in the shop which is brilliant. Um, aside from the inventory I've also spent a lot of time tidying the shop up and I've had lots and lots of positive feedback um, with regards to how um, nice the shop is looking both from regular customers and also from customers who perhaps haven't visited us for a little while um, they've come in and um, said how nice the, the shop is looking um, before I took over there were lots of pattern books and bags of yarn um, over the floor um, so it was quite difficult to make your way around the shop without um, sort of tripping over things <laughs> and also difficult to see um, all of the nice yarn that we have in store so yeah I think that's um, been a great improvement too um, I've also completely reorganized the shop um, so all of the yarn I don't think there's any ex any exceptions uh, now live somewhere um, new compared to where it was three months ago um, so yeah that was uh, quite a big task um, as you can see behind me some of the cubbies are really full with uh, different sort of yarns and different colorways um, so pulling all that out and then relocating it to somewhere else in the shop um, was quite a big job but I really wanted to do that because I thought it would give all of our regular customers a fresh perspective um, and also some of the yarns that we had in store were discontinued um, so I wanted to make room for um, new lines so um, a reorganization was kind of uh, always on the cards really um, I'm just pleased that um, we have managed to achieve that within the first few months um, I thought that would be um, a more long-term goal but uh, I'm sure I will continuously um, continuously I'm sure I will continually reorganise and rearrange things and um, as I live with things we'll decide that uh, certain things will be better off in a different place but um, for now I'm pretty happy with uh, the way the shop reorganisation has gone. One of the things that I was most worried about um, when I decided to go for it and to take on the shop was coming up with a nice window display and that has been probably one of our biggest 
successes. I have had two different window displays um, in terms of themes. When I first took over, I went for a sort of spring stroke Easter theme. Um, and now um, I've moved on to a blue and white theme um, for the window. And um, between the sort of big changes, I've also been tweaking the window in terms of I'll move a few things out, put a few new bits and pieces in. Um, so the window has been kind of constantly changing or gets tweaked. And I've had so much lovely feedback um, about how nice the window's been looking. So I'm really hoping, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I can keep up that impetus and come up with uh, new themes and new ideas to keep the window looking uh, fresh. Um, there's a school, um, a few buildings up the street and um, it's quite nice at uh, school sort of drop off and collection times to, to see the children peering in the window at uh, all of the, the things that are, are in there and um, sort of pointing things out to their parents and things. There's uh, been quite a nice excitement around that which is, has been really nice. Um, so what else has been uh, going well since we took over? Well um, I was lucky enough to inherit several groups um, that met in the shop regularly already. Um, we call them classes but they're a bit more loosely um, defined than that really. Um, people can come along and there's no set agenda, you come along and you bring whatever current project you're working on. Um, if you want help to learn a new technique or if you get stuck on your project we can help you with that. Um, if you're a complete beginner then you can come along and learn. Um, but uh, I was lucky that the uh, established groups continued to come along um, even after I took over um, and also I think no, I think every single group has actually grown um, in the last three months. We've had new people come along to every single one um, to the point where um, this week we will be starting a brand new group so um, we have a dedicated crochet group on a Wednesday and uh, we are getting requests from people who wish to learn to crochet or who wish to come along to a crochet group um, all the time and the Wednesday group is so full that um, we've had to kind of um, start uh, turning people away in terms of coming to that group um, but I have been taking names and contact details for, for people who've expressed an interest and um, we've got enough people now where we by will be starting a new group on a Thursday morning um, also for, for crocheters primarily I mean we've got no no real um, sort of strict um, restrictions on that um, people can come along and knit and crochet and um, we've also got people who come along and needle felt um, to some of the groups it's just whatever takes your fancy really um, I think for the majority of people now um, it's less about learning and more about the kind of social aspect of uh, hanging out with a bunch of like-minded people um, we provide tea and coffee and cake <laughs> uh, which is always good so um, I think a lot of people now come along just for as I say that the, the um, kind of enjoyment of hanging out with uh, other fibery folk uh, rather than in pursuit of learning anything new or different so uh, yeah that's uh, that's really nice I've also had um, people requesting um, specific workshops to learn um, particular techniques or um, make to make particular things so I mean that was always something that I had um, hoped to be able to pursue but um, obviously before I took over the business I didn't know if there would definitely be demand for that but um, people have already started making requests for that sort of um, workshop um, type situation so um, there's definitely a demand for it um, so it's just really down to me now to start uh, developing some of those um, types of sessions which uh, I'm really looking forward to now I have done the majority of the um, inventory then uh, hopefully I'll have a little bit more time to concentrate on things like that uh, in terms of yarn I am pleased to say that uh, I've been able to bring in a few new types of yarn um, I've brought one new brand into the store um, which is Stylecraft and I've got two of their 
um, lines in at the moment and that is proving to be very popular. Um, I've also bought in new lines of Serdar and Rowan yarns and for me the most exciting thing is I have now got two um, local small producers, so farm yarns um, from the local area um, now in store. Um, I've already spoken to you about yarns from the farm, uh, which is 100% Romney wool, and you can see that just above my head, um, the natural colour and the yellow skein hanging um, just above me are from Bat Farm, um, which is from the same county that we're in here in the Vale of Glamorgan. And I've also, as of last week, um, but um, got a second local producer, um, Kenexton Sheep, and the lady from Kenexton, Jane, has a flock of pole dorsets, and um, she's provided me with a whole lot of her yarn. You can see over my shoulder um, there are some cakes and some skeins and there's a variety of four ply, double knit and Aran yarns. Um, I'm sure I will talk to you more about that on another video um, but um, I'm really excited to have firm um, two local small producers in the shop now. Um, so yeah I mean as I say considering we're three months in I am I'm really pleased with that really pleased um, we've got our Facebook and Instagram accounts up and running so although we've got no website yet we do have um, the beginnings of uh, our social media presence and a little bit of uh, exposure on the web so um, that's good and the followers on um, both of those accounts um, seem to be um, growing quite steadily so that's uh, always a nice thing um, and Facebook's a great way for me to be able to keep people in touch with what's going on here in the shop um, in the interim until we have our website up and running. Just a couple more things to uh, mention on the positives. Um, the takings have been better than we expected. Um, they've not been outstanding um, I'm not going to be becoming a millionaire anytime soon um, but we haven't um, done too badly especially considering we're going into um, what is a traditionally a quieter season um, taking seem to have been reasonably steady um, and I had figures from the previous owner as to what her incomings were last year and we've seen so far in the three months that we've been um, looking after the business uh, our takings are up on what they were last year so um, that's a really nice sign and hopefully that will continue um, we have um, also been able to support a couple of local makers and artists so not only do we stock yarn I also have some jewellery from a local um, bead artist and uh, not work artist. Her name is Susan Millado and she has published several books on not work. Um, so uh, she actually comes along to one of our groups, which is fantastic. Um, and she obviously lives here in the local area. Um, so I was happy when she asked if we could um, think about putting a few of her makes on display. Uh, it's always nice to. Um, have a few different things in store for people to have a look at um, and that seems to have been going pretty well actually Can, I was a bit um, unsure as to you know whether people would buy necklaces and bracelets and earrings and things in a yarn shop um, but it's attracted quite a lot of interest and we've um, steadily had uh, sales coming in and they seem to be um, building as time goes on. So yeah, um, I'm hopeful that uh, that will continue. Um, um, as I say, it's lovely to, to be able to um, support other local artists and makers. Um, also on in that regard, I have some beautiful, beautiful handmade baskets in the shop um, from a lady who lives around the corner. Um, she is French by origin and her dad still lives in France and he grows willow on his property. Um, he harvests it, I don't know if that's the <laughs> right word, um, soaks it on his property, gets it, you know, dries it all out. And then um, when 
Isabel goes back to visit him every year. Um, she says it's an activity they do together. They sit outside his property and um, they weave the willow into beautiful handmade baskets. So um, I've also got a few of those in store and um, I'm sure I'll show you some of those um, at some point in the not too distant future as well. Um, and the final um, success and if you watch my last video you'll already know about this is last week I hosted a charity make along for the octopus for a premium charity here in the UK um, and we had all of our customers um, and well anyone that came into the shop really we were talking to them about the charity and um, we had a raffle going on and we had a make along so people could um, either sit with us and start their projects or they could take away yarn uh, and pattern for a small donation to the charity to start making um, and that event was really really successful as well um, so yeah phew I think uh, that's it I think I've made it to the end of that list um, and um, you'll probably agree if you've made it this far um, sat and listened to me waffle on um, then I'm sure you can agree that's quite a lot of things to have um, managed to achieve uh, in three months so yeah I, I, I couldn't really be happier um, there are days when I think to myself that you know I wish I'd done this or oh no we haven't been able to start that yet um, but uh, sitting down and trying to make this uh, list um, for the video has kind of just reminded me of uh, how much we have achieved. Um, so yeah, uh, it's it's been tough. Uh, you know, it's not been easy every day. It's been very hard work, and I never really imagined um, how physical um, the job would be. You know, I run a yarn shop. Um, we supply things for knitting and crochet you know it, it doesn't um immediately put you in the picture of um someone who's you know on the on their feet lifting carrying shifting all day um but that's kind of how it's been but mo most of it's been self-imposed because i wanted to tidy up and reorganize um but uh yeah it, it's been a lot more physically demanding um than I ever anticipated. Also very emotionally demanding, um, especially the first few weeks. It's very, very difficult to, to switch off, even when I was at home. Um, constant ideas flowing through my head, a constant list of things that I wanted to um, try and achieve. Um, it was, Yeah, it was just really hard to kind of switch that off. But uh, as I am getting further into this, um, and the newness is wearing off a little bit. Um, I am finding that I'm able to, to relax more when I go home from the shop and it's not as constant um, as it was to start with, which uh, I think is only natural, you know, when um, any big life event happens or um, things change, you know, it, um, it takes up a big um, sort of portion of your energy and um, your thoughts and it's uh, often difficult to switch off but uh, I think we're over that initial period now so hopefully I shall become um, a lot more able to um, relax and uh, kind of just enjoy enjoy things as they come along rather than just be worrying about them all the time or um, thinking about them whether they're going to be a success or whether there's going to be a failure um, I'm sure I'll probably make some big failures along the way um, but you know um, we learn from our mistakes, so um, it's just yarn and knitting at the end of the day. <laughs> um, so before I sign off, um, I just quickly chat about some of the things that we've got up and coming. Um, I won't spend too long on this because I'm conscious that I've already um, bent your ear off and you are probably fed up of listening to me waffle on by now um but uh yeah for the next uh, few months uh our guess our targets are to get the logo finalized and the website up and running um i have commissioned a unit to be built under the counter here in the shop which will really help me um be able to tidy up all of the pattern books and i think it will make a big difference to um the the layout of the shop and uh it will make things hopefully look even more tidier. Um, that's the one area that uh, 
can get a little bit uh, scruffy looking so um, I think that will make a really really big difference um, I've uh, had a quote from a local carpenter I'm just now waiting to hear back from him as to when he can actually fit us in um, to carry out the work um, hopefully I shall be starting to develop some uh, more specific workshops and classes that will be my focus over the next few months and um, one of the more exciting things that uh, will be upcoming over the next few weeks hopefully um, is I have been in touch with the publishers of Pom Pom magazine which is one of my favourite knitting magazines and with any luck we will be a pom pom stockist in the not too distant future um, so that's really really exciting news um, from my perspective anyway and hopefully um, some of my customers will um, be discovering Pom Pom and uh, maybe it will um, help us bring in a few new customers as well um, so yeah um, the other thing that I'd like to achieve in the um, next quarter um, will be to bring in some indie dye yarns so I've got my local farm yarns now um, with the um, the two local small producers um, but it'll be nice to try and um, expand and get in a few um, indie dyed um, skeins of yarn and introduce that to um, some of my regular customers and see how that goes down so uh, yeah um, I think that's it for today um, yeah thank you very much if you have stuck with me because uh, this has been a bit of a waffly rambly episode and um, a lot of the things you would have heard me if you've watched all of the previous videos you'd have heard of me talk about before so um, if you've made it this far then I really do appreciate you sticking with me. Um, I shall be back soon and um, I'm sure the next video will be um, more of a project update video so um, I'll have more things to actually show you, um, um, yarns and projects and patterns that I'm working on. So hopefully um, if uh, you come back to, to join me, um, that one might be a bit more um, interactive. But um, yeah, I shall um, say goodbye for now and um, hopefully I will be back to uh, chat with you again soon. Bye for now.